Hello, my name is Christopher McLemore, and I'm here with Freddie Moore, a founding member of the New Cats. And we're here to uh, do a personal interview and get some feedback and see if we can uh, talk about a little bit about the process and how they got started. And one of the first questions I wanted to ask you was, um, it has been often said, um, one of the, um, the most difficult challenges is one of the hardest things to do to kind of pursue your dreams or when you're just starting out is just getting started. Um, I know it's been some years ago, you know, back in the early 80s, but I was wondering if you could kind of walk us through that process of how you guys got started when you put the band together. Uh, Dennis and I were from Minnesota, and uh, we were in a band together eventually, and uh, we got uh, discovered by Bob Dylan's little brother, David Zimmerman, and he became our manager and our record producer, and we, we made some records with him, and um, we got as far as we could, we thought, in show business at Minneapolis. We, we didn't predict that a few years later Prince would make it out of Minneapolis, but <laughs> we thought we had to leave and go to Los Angeles to make it big. And uh, so that's what we did. We packed up and we drove across the country. Uh, we didn't know anyone in Los Angeles. Uh, we just did it. And then we, the first thing we had to do to, to stay alive is to play top 40 dance gigs and stuff instead of our original music. And we did that for maybe six months. And then we started learning about clubs similar to Genghis Cohen. Right. Um, and then we worked our way up through the lower level clubs. And then we got to the Whiskey, the Starwood, the... I don't know if the people even know those places. <laughs> those were famous Sunset Strip clubs back in the 70s. See, they're cheering for it back there. And um, that's does that answer that question? That, that does, that does, that does, that does. So, I mean, when was the moment, it sounds like you said when you were in college, you were right, you started writing songs, so you knew early on that you that you're going to be a musician. When was that moment for you that you knew that you well, were going first, to? Be a at first, I didn't really understand that there was such a thing as a songwriter or a or a musician. But when the Beatles came out, I read in a mag teen magazine that they wrote their own songs, right. and I was like, "Hey, I always write songs. I you know make up stuff." Yeah. So I thought, you know, I should just do that. So when I was 14, I started keeping track of the songs I was writing instead of just you know writing okay. them and letting them go away so you know i, I had a huge catalog of songs uh, by 1971 because i started writing in 64. yes and so that's how it happened I, <laughs> I i i never got into a band all those years but uh i was just a songwriter and awesome. uh, some bands would ask me you know can we do your song and stuff yes. like that and then i got in my own band and and you know what happened we got david zimmerman to manage right. us and he got a record deal and we were on our way awesome as a musician what is the favorite thing you like to look at when you look out into the audience well the best thing of course is to see people you know cheering and throwing their tops off <laughs> but uh you know i i like entertaining i i like feeling like we're we're giving them some enjoyment you know you could get sometimes an agent would book you somewhere where you're not appropriate and it's just like you know what are we going to do <laughs> you know these they've not they don't want to hear what we do right. and stuff like that but you know it's obviously better to to have a audience cheering you on. yes well i guess in that same vein then you said you like to give the audience something if you could just choose just one um what would be the message that you hope that you guys convey to your fans through your music if you had to pick one message I don't. I guess I. I. I don't think I can answer that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I. I want the audience to really enjoy what we're doing, and I'm. That's. You know, I don't. It's not like I try to figure out what they're gonna want or anything. Right. But you know, I've been real lucky that people have liked my music and stuff. And uh, follow your dreams. Just kind of yeah. be who you want to be. Yeah. Um. Now, I know I'm, I'm taking you back a little bit, but, you know, you've been, been doing this for 30-plus years. Um, what is, like, could you share with us one of your, like, most unforgettable moments? Yes. Well, I have a million about? road stories. <laughs> and But one of the wildest ones is we were touring in the Ozarks, and our booking agent, this New York guy, yes. flew down and said, I want to, you know, see what it's like to be on this trip. Yes. So 
we let him drive in the Ozark Mountains. There was a cliff on, fall straight off on this side and a, a wall of a cliff on this side. And we were up on this little mountain road no way. trying to get to our next gig. And the tie rod fell out of our, we had a Winnebago at the time. And then fell, we heard this clink. And then the guy was going, the spinning the wheel. There's no steering. There's no steering. So we were like, no. So we said, put on the brake, and it, we didn't know what would happen. But fortunately, we're all alive because <laughs> he put oh on God. the brake, and then we did a, a direct. The whole thing just crashed into the wall, and it was like an accordion. Oh. And we were really shook up and bloody and beat down and everything, but we were still alive. Man. And we didn't go off the cliff. We would have been dead if we would have gone the other way. So our roadies came in a truck. We said, go to the next town and get a tow, tow, tow them to send a tow truck. So we were sitting there in the middle of the Ozarks. It's a re, it was really hillbilly back then. Oh, my God. And we're just these long-haired guys sitting on the side of the road. And these two guys oh. in a pickup truck drove up and parked right in front of us. And they got out and sat in a bale of, the hay, in, of hay in the pickup truck no way and then they went like crossed their arms and they after a while they said any of you girls want to dance and we no! were like oh you know deliverance <laughs> you know and uh fortunately they drove away after that oh my and, god uh, we we survived but that is a story the the end of the story is even better <laughs> so we had to hitchhike to our next gig right so this guy picked us up in this big old limb uh looked like a hearse or something yes and he we were driving along he's telling us his stories and stuff yes. and then he said you one of you fellas lift up the curtain in the back and see what you think and we're like what is this gonna be so we 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 lifted up the thing and there was a bunch of like skulls and bones and stuff and we're sitting there going this is it you know this is it we're gonna join this guy's collection and and he said, guess what I use them for? And I, we were like, what? And we were like, yes, we're afraid to ask. Please don't. <laughs> and he said, and he said, I'm gonna make a skeleton out of all the bones and put a cow's head on top and drive around to shopping centers and charge everyone 25 cents to see the skeleton of the devil. <laughs> and fortunately he didn't do anything else to us. Oh my god, that is that is really, really a wild story. Okay, could you tell us a little bit about the song that one of the songs that you're gonna be playing tonight, where I lost my TV guy? Yeah, that uh, I don't know how that one came out of me, but it's it's ended up being the most popular song, and it's still popular when no one even has TV guides anymore. <laughs> I can't figure out that, but um, I was sitting at home going, all right, you know, I was working in a band. I'd come home at night, I'd have to unwind, so I wanted to watch TV, and I always I'm like. Uh, I wanted to know what was going to be on TV so I could plan to watch the best thing. Right. And one time I couldn't find the TV guide. And I looked and I was ripping up all the sofa and everything and throwing it and looking under chairs. And, and I sat down and went, this is absurd. I'm letting a TV guide cause me to behave like this. And I then the next day I thought, that's a good idea for a song. I could tell that true story that... I came home, I couldn't find my TV guide, I went in a big hissy fit, I <laughs> threw everything around, I had to clean everything up afterwards, that was the worst part. And, uh, you know, that's what the lyrics are about. It's about a guy losing his TV guide and it's a big deal to him. <laughs> Somehow that song has become extremely popular, it's the most popular song of ours. And awesome. It's, and and it's, this is like way past the era of TV guides. <laughs> I, I don't know why it's still Must popular. have resonated with people. Maybe it's the music. I don't know. There you it's, go. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's one of them. The other one that's kind of interesting is is um, it's not a rumor, which I when I wrote it, I was married to Demi Moore, and she, I said I was trying to get her to get into creativity, and I said why don't you try to write some lyrics or something to the song? So we got to the last verse, and she she made up a couple of words. And I said, okay, great. You actually co-wrote a song now. And that song also became very popular. That's the second most popular song I've written. And, uh, you know, and had to be more in the story so everyone loves hearing that. Right? Awesome, awesome. Nice. Um, I'm going to ask one more question and kind of close it out. Um, so 
what can the uh, the New Cats fans expect on a go forward? Are you guys going to be just kind of touring, doing these small venues? Or are you going to come out with a new album? Going to continue no. to do well? New? What we're doing right now is um, Metal Blade Records contacted me on the web and said, you know, we would like to re-release all your old records on MP3. And so we went through a contract negotiation and we, we signed that. And what I'm trying to do now is publicize the re-release of all our records and try to get those selling. So that's why we're playing at, you know, that's why we started playing. We're going out playing, you know, we're doing the songs from those albums and and I put together the five-piece band. Dennis and I had a two-piece band for a while and we were doing the newer songs I was writing. But okay. to promote the albums, we're doing the, the, tonight we're doing the songs from those various albums. Okay. Well, we wish you continued. That's what we're well, we wish you much success with that. Thank and that's you. what we're here to record and do the show. So we'll be right there on stage and recording uh, every uh, moment tonight. All right. But thank you so much for your time. Right. We appreciate it. Thank you. Nice. Okay. Yeah.